welcome to the Purpose Summit. And uh, this is the first keynote we are having today. And uh, we are very, very fortunate. And it's our privilege and honor to welcome uh, Mr. Sanjeev Bikchandani, Padam Shri. He's also the executive chairman of InfoEdge uh, and co-founder of Ashoka University. And if you look at the line of companies, he's been founded uh, since 1990, almost uh, 30, 31 years ago. You found that, you know, he has actually taken care of everything in your life. You know, right from Shiksha, you know, he's moved to Nokri, he's moved to Jeevan Sathi and now 99acres.com. And now he is also supporting startups which are into food. So I think Roti Kapada Makan is all set by Mr. Vik Chandani. So, we, we, you know, this is, that's my first question to you. Uh, uh, that uh, what prompted you, you were, you know, from I am Ahmedabad, you had a cushy uh, corporate life. You were working in various interesting assignments from advertising to, to brand management and others. And at that time, you know, uh, in, the, in the early 90s, uh, what prompted you to move and create something on your own? You know, uh, so what was your uh, motivation to do that? Well, it boils down to the theme of this summit, which is purpose. Right. You know, uh, when I was uh, working my last job in Glaxo, in a company that's now called GlaxoSmithKline, then it was called HMM, I was in marketing, managing Holics. Uh, and there were, I kind of figured, uh, I used to ask myself a few uncomfortable questions. You know, I'm 26. Uh, what, if I look ahead 20, 30 years, uh, what would I have achieved in my life, which I look back upon? And, you know, the future was predictable that, you know, if I work well for five years, I'll become a, a brand manager or a product manager, seven, eight years, marketing manager, 10, 15 years, head of marketing, you know, either here or somewhere else. Right. Uh, and I realized that I was, uh, you know, a prisoner of my visiting card. I wanted an MNC label. Uh, and uh, bank loans but in Ashkal, people are prisoners of the visiting cards and the EMIs. So you've got fixed outgoes, means you must have fixed income, which means uh, you will stay in a job. Right? And I began to say, look, how do we measure success? How do we, you know, I measure success by if my car is a foot longer than yours, I'm more successful than you. Right? If my house is in Vasant Bihar in Delhi, but not in Munirka, which are half a kilometer apart. Right. You know, there's a Munirka DDA flat for some of bungalows. I must be more successful than you. And we are always striving for benchmarks of success, which are, you know, in the, if you take a long view, a minor. They don't matter, really. How does it matter if my apartment is 2,000 square feet versus yours is 4,000 square feet. Or mine is 1,500 square foot, yours is 3,000 square foot. You know what? In real terms, it doesn't matter. And I said to myself that, look, I need to re recalibrate my goals. And, you know, what is it that I want to do with the rest of my life? And I came to the conclusion that, uh, you know, I would keep on asking myself these questions and the answer I would come out with were, were not uh, exciting. It would make me uncomfortable. And uh, I finally took the step of quitting my job and saying, let me be independent and do something on my own. You know, I, I'm sure I can come back to a job anytime I want because, uh, you know, qualifications are here. Right, right. Uh, so that's that insurance net. But um, let me try something. So in 1990, I was... Uh, 27, I quit my job and uh, began to do salary surveys. We began in the seventh quarter of the garage in my father's house. Uh, sort of salary survey, kar liya, thoda small time, whoever gave you a short two assignment, you did it. Some market research, right. some consulting, some trademarks database, some report writing, some presentation development. And we pottered around for seven years, just drifting. And Saat Saal Ki Drift Ke Baad, we had done 20 small things by then. Teaching, right. training, writing, whatever. 
So you experimented right. with everything, right? I mean, whatever came my way, yeah, it was just to survive. I was right. I was teaching at various business schools on weekends, um, you know, okay. in and around Delhi to survive. That you know, basically, I had no income, right? So right. I had to right. earn some money uh, right. to be able to survive, which I did for seven years, right? Uh, by teaching on weekends at business schools and visiting faculty in and around Delhi, right? Uh, so did you not feel would, that you have to go back to corporate life at that point of time that it, things were not going exactly? No, the see, I was, uh, I, was, uh, I was stubborn, I had a big ego, and I was ambitious. Now, quitting after two, three years of entrepreneurship and going back to a job would have meant, and, and in those days, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurial experience not respected at all in large corporations. Right. So it effectively meant you have written off your career, now you're back and you will be on the slow track. Got it. Right, and you will never rise to the top. And that was the rule in large organizations in the eighties and early nineties. Got it. When I began my career, and so going back was not an option because it meant admitting failure. It meant being resigned to a life of uh, being middle management. Right, never rising to the top, and that was not okay with me. So there was no question of uh, you know I had burnt my bridges in my head that there is no question of going back. I will come what may, I'll not go back. Uh, and so you sort of drifted along for seven years, uh, doing a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and trying 20 small things. And then in 1997, after seven years of drifting, we launched Nokri as one more small idea. When we thought of it, we had not imagined it would be a big idea. It was one more small idea. So these and, were the initial years for dot coms in India and the world as well as our some yeah, of so our when we launched Nokri, are young. Yeah, yeah, they would we, not have realized that you know. Yeah. Yeah. When we launched Nokri, there were only fourteen thousand internet accounts in the country. Right. Now, if you take into account shared usage in office, maybe two lakh users. Now that's nothing compared to today, but when at that point of time, it looked to me to be good enough to start a nifty small business. So Nokri was conceived in 1997 and launched in 1997 as a nifty small business. Right? And who knows what might happen in the future, but you know, hopefully it can give you enough money to live. Right? Uh, the money, there was no you know, venture capital, there was no dot-com valuation, no nothing. I'd never yeah. heard of it, those things. We had to break even to survive, which means the customer had to pay us for something. Right? So we started small. And uh, our, the extent of our vision was to first at least break even in a, in a year or two, and then try and eke out a little profit so that you can take a small right. salary home. Right? right? And that was the limit of our ambition when we launched. But as things happened, you know, worked hard, worked smart, got lucky, right place, right time, internet grew, we grew along with it. Right. And it took us a couple of years to realize that, hey, maybe, maybe we stumbled upon a big idea after all. When was that? When was that moment? So that realization came around 98, 99, maybe a year and a half after we lost Nokri. Right. And you'd have seen something happening in the in the US where the Silicon Valley new dot coms are coming up. There's a, there was a yeah, so I happening in I didn't actually. Sorry, I, I didn't actually yeah. for a while, you know, um, mm. until we began to get inbound interest, phone calls coming into us from investors saying, "Could we ah, please invest okay. in your company?" And we were baffled because, you know, in all my eight nine years and of being an entrepreneur, right. no one ever called right. you up to give you money. You had to go and right. beg for money. So that's not what intrigued. I said, "What is this?" And that's not began to research, and I discovered what's happening in America. America, right, exactly, right. Okay, and so Crazy then, uh, and, yeah. yeah, so, so we said no, you know, I, I said I don't want to copy you. <laughs> no, 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 I All just don't know. You don't know. If it's true, people are giving money, you know, the news is coming, so it will be true, right? But uh, you see, I said no because I met a couple of investors and I was frankly baffled at what they said. Okay. You know, uh, I met a couple of investors and I was frankly baffled at what they said. Okay. You know, uh, you know, this guy says to me, no, now we are doing three lakhs a month of revenue. Hmm. And this guy says, we'll give you $2 million for 25% in your company. Now, $2 million, 
आठ करोड़ होते थे एट करोड़ फोर्टी रुपीज टू डॉलर दैट एंड राइट ना यू नो वी आर रनिंग स्मॉल कंपनी आउट ऑफ माई फादर्स हाउस इन ट्रांस नॉट अ वेरी फैशनेबल प्लेस यू नो the voltage that comes is 160 you can't really run your air conditioners you only don't have enough air conditioner first place you don't have power backup because you can't afford the batteries you know and this guy is offering us a valuation of some uh, 32 crores right to you know 2 million dollars yeah of course yeah so so i was very baffled and i asked him we uh, i think it's very good that you're giving us 2 million dollars for 25% but what will we do with the money i could i couldn't fathom what we would do with it cross into so much money right and he said oh it's very simple you will spend it on advertising ha you know full page you'll ads spend, <laughs> you'll spend it on advertising you will build your brand and that's a barrier to entry and and some more and then you will raise twice the money at four times valuation after six months and then one year from now we list you on nasdaq right, right. and i'm saying to myself we are uh, you know we're running our trans seminar uh, we are doing three lakhs a month of revenue we are barely breaking even i i can't take a salary uh, you know i didn't know what exactly nasdaq was but i'd heard the term somewhere and i said okay fine it's a stock exchange in the us maybe uh, and uh, i said yeah we can't listen to hargan forget about nasdaq this guys uh, smoking dope So, हमने मना कर दिया सबको कि बॉस लीजा क्रेजी हमारी कंपनी and then funded competition launched jobs ahead launched uh, having raised 8 million dollars pre launch launch karne se pehle they had raised 8 million dollars and they launched with tv advertising on the india pakistan cricket series in sharjah wow the mecca at that on the so, in those so, years so <laughs> so you know um, yeah. their launch ad budget we found out was twice our annual revenue just launch at budget easily easily yeah they are on steroids okay so that's when we said okay fine you know you can't do this through internal accruals alone you got to get right internal money right right and uh, we went out to the market and uh, it was bubble time so right. we spoke to four investors and got three offers okay and we took one and we raised uh, well uh, it looked like a lot of money to us then but now in hindsight but today standard very small sum of money we raised 1.7 million dollars to 7.3 crore rupees right for uh, you know for 15% of the company and with that, that money we better deal yeah right and with that money we built the company so how was How tough was it to when you started raising money and you started building the team? So was it was it because those are initial years and people were were very wary of internet and dot coms and and others, you know. So uh, how how difficult was it to build the team because initially you were just working with a small team. Now you are completely you got money. You have to expand. You have to scale up. You have to get more talent coming in. Uh, you know, people no, who understand technology. So fortunately, so, you know, yeah. I had. Uh, got a good network of friends and associates and you know so so the initial people are all people i knew right friends and friends right. of friends yeah. okay now once the money came in what happened was the market melted down so other dot coms you know began to shut down and a lot of talent was released in the market right so we were able to hire from that pool of talent and that was good for us that we uh, and when 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 there's a recession you get talent easily right right if so long as you're capitalized well enough and you have a plan so we got lucky in that sense uh, we didn't have a initial problem in getting talent right so so from from nokri how did the thought came for other 
ideas right from you know 99 acres to jeevan sathi to other so how exactly you natural... expanded this whole yeah see uh, what happened was we kept running nokri and nokri became a decent size and began to make profits right that became your cash cow hmm. that became well it's not a cash cow it's a cash star it's going fast and making profits faster yeah the star one hmm. uh, right uh now we said what do we do with this money we can give it back to shareholders uh or you know we can uh, start new businesses or we can take nokri global so we decided against taking nokri global we felt that look um, those are markets and customers we don't understand fully there's right. entrenched competition there this is a winner take all market this is competition that will be hard to dislodge why don't we look at other classified categories which are newspapers right. and bring them online bring them online so Got natural it. progression was uh, matrimony and real estate right shiksha came later when we figured that look education advertising it's, is uh, the second largest advertising category in print so can we get a share of that budget that wallet and that's when we launched shiksha right so the progression is fairly logical right so you know there's some very interesting question has come from the audience and uh, this question is very interesting is out of all the arenas that you have worked in what did you enjoy doing the most and do you see yourself venturing into another arena any other passion undiscovered yet <laughs> that well look the company is now mature it's large right it employs right. four and a half thousand people it's got a large market cap so uh i don't think uh i'm going to be able to leave the company i'm 57 50 i'll be 58 this year so it's not as if i would do one more startup myself right i could back other entrepreneurs who are younger yes. than me who have a good career 30 40 years ahead of them right right and if i think they're going to do something great you know maybe i'll back them right, right. so so how do you spot that talent because you know you're, you're one of the early investors in some of the very the unicorns here in india so how did you spot that talent what what instinct prompted you to back those early guys you know so look when we invested we did not imagine they become unicorns we simply right. said seem like a good idea seem like good people uh they're showing some evidence of getting some natural traction put in a small sum of money and let's see what happens right uh and as the companies began to do better and better we put more and more money behind them right so it is about starting small taking baby steps and putting right. in more money right. now you know we have invested in 30 35 startups right of which two have become some art of policy bola right So you have a portfolio approach as well. So you know, uh, many times, uh, uh, you know, this, some of these uh, uh, st- early stage startups, you know, you have invested in them and they are not doing as well as would have uh, you wanted. How do you handhold them? How do you go about? You know, what is the process of you know? Uh, well, we have a team. We have them. a team that works. Yeah, we have a team that works with them. Uh, okay. Now, now, so first, first of all, first of all, you got to invest behind entrepreneurs who are capable. Got it. The they should not need too much. They should not need too much handholding. True. Right. If if they need more than two percent handholding, right, uh, you invest in the wrong startup and the wrong people. So the secret of successful early stage investing. is to invest behind teams and ideas and companies and startups that are going to succeed anyway right with your help they might succeed 10% faster mm-hmm. or 20% more but they would have succeeded anyway right so you can't invest behind not so good people and say i will make them great it doesn't work people doesn't are work who they are mm. people are who they are right Now, even if you look at uh, the business school that you know the MBA program, the business program that Flame is running, right? Ultimately, when people join you, they are already grown up. 
True. True. Right? Their work ethic is set. Their values are set. Values are set. You're right. Okay. Now, in a one or two years experience, you can't really transform them. You can equip them with some skill and knowledge, expose them to certain real world concepts. And nudge them to a particular and, direction. And nudge them and nudge them and then hope for the best. It's up to them. Hope for the best. Yeah, you're right. It's like that with startups. Your selection is very important. You put them to the extent you can, you give them money, and then you hope for the best. So if somebody, there's another interesting question has come uh, from a budding entrepreneur. So how would a young, young budding entrepreneur would pitch his or her idea to a potential investor like you? So look, I mean, the standard answer is when you go to our website, you can send your, you can send your pitch, somebody will reach out to you, we'll set up a meeting. That's a standard idea. But the real way to do it, the best way to do it is, you got to understand that the customer's money is better than the investor's money. Right. Okay. The reason is that if you're getting the customer's money and you're getting it repeatedly, and you're getting it at a price that's higher than the cost, right. then chances are you have a viable business so long as you can get enough customers. Right? So if you are a little revenue positive, probably you can showcase this as a... Now, now uh, and if you get the customer's money, the investor's money will almost certainly follow. Because investors love to invest behind companies that are getting the customer's money. However, if you get the investor's money first, there's no guarantee that the customer's money will follow. So, if you are revenue or you customer, la rahe ho, the, believe me, the investor will find you. Right. Because he'll hunt you out. Because investors look yeah, because, deals. Because they are also looking at investing or finding out. Yeah. Uh, so, as much as... So, the so I would say focus on, fo focus on getting the customer's money more and less or investor right. money less. Right. Right. Okay. There's a very interesting question which has come. Like for example, a lot of people are looking at your knockery success and not looking at the first eight years or seven years of what you've been doing in terms of uh, marginal success in some of the businesses. But for a young startup guy who's just starting off on something and the first or two uh, ideas don't work, uh, what would you tell them? How would they take failure? How do you how do you manage failure? I think you got you got to be clear about uh, you know your goals and committed to them, right? And you got to figure out that look, I'm in this for a long haul, so I may fail once, I may fail twice, but I'll succeed the third time, All right. right? And at at no point in time should you take such large financial bets that uh, you know in case you lose that one, everything right. is lost. Right. It should be a, right. a plan B. Plan B is. If fail, what am I going to do? I had a plan B. I was teaching in business schools. Right. Now you had some parallel stream of money coming in. I, no, I had a uh, something to do, and uh, you know, while I was uh, doing this for seven years. No, I, I got to know about this as well. I I, I was telling this to my students. Uh, if you read Shoe Dog or Phil Knight, you know, he was a he was a CPA and of course a Stanford guy. For first 10 years, he continued to work uh, full time in another organization while supporting Nike. And he had another team of people who were working. So he also kept on bringing another stream of revenues to do that. There's a very interesting question. Uh, Mr. Bikchandani has come from very young uh, Ria Suntalia uh, from our audience and says, what would you tell 20 year old who does not know what he or she wants to do, how would they find their calling? You know, so I think it comes back to the same purpose thought when you started with. So how would a 20 year old find his or her? I, I, would, say, I would say engage with enough things. Okay. The more you engage, the more you try things out, the more you learn. Right. The more okay. you explore, more explore. And you should also learn by doing, which means get into a job, do something, figure out if this is your calling. Right. Right. Uh, and, and, and then move on. Very nice. Fantastic. Interesting question has come, uh, which is, uh, what was your biggest investment in yourself? I think that's an interesting question. I think my biggest investment myself was the seven year drift. Right. Where I tried 50 different things and I wasn't making money, but I was happy. 
and I wasn't chasing money. Right. But the learning at that time held me in good stead. Right. Right. So now that you have the money, right? What's your thought process? How would you, how do you plan your entire portfolio of activities and things and, and, and years ahead? How do you plan now? Well, look, there's a there's a team that does it. Right? Okay. I don't do that much. I mean, I don't do, I don't do it alone. Right? Right. But uh, we keep meeting startups, for example. Okay. So in a month, we must be meeting about a, a few hundred startups. And after you meet a few hundred, you figure out good from bad. And right. you figure out which ones to bad. Now that's the investing business. In the right. operating business, it's about staying in touch with customers and figuring right. out what the customers want, what will work with them, and then going out and doing it. Now, looking back, back at the year which has gone by, which was the pandemic year and a lot of uh, ups and downs and happened in, in the whole world, uh, how have your businesses uh, you know, managed during these tough times? We've been fortunate. Uh, of course, the lockdown impacted people uh, the first two, three months, but the bounce back has been decent and um, almost all our businesses are now okay. Okay. How do you see India now progressing in that direction? Because, you know, how's the job market in opening up? There's a lot of students in my audience who are a little worried about how the market would look like, whether the jobs are coming up, and you have the data. So what does the um, forecast look so, like? Look, at the entry level, people who the first jobs, it's still difficult. Okay. Right? And I suspect it'll stay difficult for a while. Uh, having said that... Uh, right. Take it in your stride, I'd say. Hmm. Something unfortunate has happened, COVID. It's right. impacted the economies the world over. Right. So if it takes you one extra year to get to where you want to go, it should be okay. During that one year, what do you want to do? I would say upgrade your skills, do a course or two, uh, do a free apprenticeship, get some experience, enhance your CV. Right. Yeah, all across, right? So this is the time for you to kind of keep upgrading yourself and be ready when the, when the market opens up and right. in that particular sense. And uh, Perfect. Okay, uh, there's a very uh, interesting question I wanted to ask about if somebody is, is getting into college today and you look back to your own times, which was, of course, 35, 40 years ago, what is it that that particular person needs to do apart from studies and st apart from, you know, activities and culturals and everything else. Uh, what is it you would advise them to do? What is already expected out of them? You're talking about in college? In college. Look, I would say, uh, even though you told me apart from that, I would say, that, look, it's really important that uh, you first study hard. So there is no substitute for the grades you get, for the knowledge you acquire in college. Good grades open up doors. Okay. Now, apart from that, you know, try and do something practical, I'd say. I'm happy it came from you, not from me, that <laughs> grades are good. <laughs> no, grades are good. Yeah. Grades are good because they open doors. Right. They get you, they get you into shortlists. Right. They get you better admissions, better jobs. Right. Okay. Uh, so grades are important as a foundation, but apart from that, I say do, some, do a few practical things. Right. Some internship somewhere. Hmm. In your internship, you should ideally be either making something or selling something. Right. Right. You are talking about you are talking about Real business. Yeah, real business. You are either making something or you are selling something. In selling your something. in your job as an intern. Right. If it's a software company, you should be actually writing code, code. or you should be selling the software. Right. right. Because these are two skills which are absolutely essential for an entrepreneur. You've got to make what you want to sell and you've got to sell what you've made. You need to have your hands dirty in any, any yeah. aspect. Yeah. These are the two important things you make and you sell, right? And then you sell what you make. So I think that particular sense. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, it's an interesting question about quitting. I think uh, Meenu Shekhar has asked a very interesting question about uh, what's your opinion on quitting? So, look, 
it's a nuanced answer. Now, it's possible that you, know, you really need the money that a steady salary gives you. Maybe you will quit and go back to your job. Right. Right. And that's fine. It's possible that you may have changed your mind about entrepreneurship and you want to go back. That's also fine. Right. But if you haven't, then I'd say hang on in there somehow. Right. Right. The success will come eventually. But keep a very close eye on the customer, your consumer, mm. because a better understanding of the consumer, his or her behavior, need gaps, will tell you how to fine tune your offering so that you succeed. Perfect. Okay, this Sanjana Chaudhary has asked a very interesting question from our audience is that what is the one characteristic trait that you look for in an entrepreneur? How does one guy stand out for you? I would say uh, consumer insight, uh, coupled insight. with practical innovation, right. deliver a solution to a customer's problem, coupled with frugality, personal frugality. And how would they develop this ability to, you know, get this insight? What is the best to develop insight? So I'll tell you, uh, I'll tell you a couple of stories. So when I was yes. working in my last job in GlaxoSmithKline, in H what, what was called HMM then, you know, I was in the marketing team, there were seven, eight of us, we would all sit in an open hall. So right. I could see what the others were doing and saying. Right? And I used to observe that every time the office copy of Business India would come in, Everybody would read it from the back. Right? Okay. The reason being that there were 35 to 40 pages of appointment ads in the back of the magazine. And I used to find this strange behavior. I said, you know, I used to say, yeah, you do. I thought people bought magazines to read the articles. These guys are looking at the jobs. The jobs. Right? Exactly. Okay. And that's where I got the insight that jobs are a high interest category of information that everybody's looking at them all the time. Right. All the time. Yeah. Right. Okay, and therefore, uh, when I saw the next for the first time, I said uh, that why don't I get newspapers from around the country, take the appointment ads and put them in, in our own words and uh, put them on the net and see what happens, which is what we did right. and the website worked. So successful businesses are built on deep customer insights. I had a customer insight that people are interested in jobs. We built a website that would put all the jobs out there. Right. It worked. Uh, how was the motto started? Where did the idea come from? I spoke to Dipinder Goel. Hmm. Went over the first time. He was running a small site that time in 2010. But it, I liked it. It was getting traffic and traction and repeat usage. So obviously he was onto something. I asked him, idea kaise aya? Hmm. He said, he used to work in Bain Consulting in Google. Right. It was an office where there were some 40, 50 people, mostly young, mostly male, mostly living away from home. So they mm -hmm. would not get lunch from home. Right. Uh, and there is no Dabawala equivalent in Gurugam also. <laughs> no, there, I don't think there is. But anyway, at least there wasn't then. Right? Yes. So office had a cafeteria which would not serve lunch. Mm. But, but you could bring your own food and eat it there. Right. To make life easy for the employee, the admin team had compiled, had collected all the menu cards of roughly 80 restaurants that were delivered to the location. And put it in a file folder for shared access in the cafeteria. Deepinder said, yeah, it has to be a long line at one o'clock. I have to wait half an hour to even order my food. Right. But I couldn't access a file because everyone was using it. So one Saturday I came in and scanned all the menu cards and uploaded them on my personal page on the mm. office internet. Two days later, the IT infra guy came to me and said, what have you done? Why is 98% of internal traffic going to your page? Penny dropped, customer insight. People value menu cards. Right. He aggregated all the menu cards of all the restaurants in Delhi and said, launched. Site security. Successful businesses are built on deep customer insights. Stay close to the customer. All right. 
now it's a now if you if you reflect now you are reached a stage in life where you are also looking at something to to do exciting later which i'll ask sometime later but if you now reflect at your journey right uh, what you would have done it differently um maybe i would have raised capital a little earlier maybe i would have uh, hired good people a little earlier maybe i would have uh, you know done a few product launches a bit earlier Mm-hmm. other than that uh, you know i would do things same okay now, now these are the ideas which succeeded with you shiksha jeevan sathi nokri and others i'm sure you would be having another bunch of ideas which you thought about it started doing something and then didn't pursue further were there when any when we had launched a print magazine called nokri in what okay you don't do it uh we had uh, you know not launched a resume database nokri for 5 years that was a mistake right so right. there are there are asked that there are things we have done we have invested in companies that have failed and had to shut down right. all those things have happened right 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 cool so let's take up one last question this question by anonymous uh, person which says after venturing into a new arena and realizing that it is not for you how do you pick yourself back up and venture into something new or continue the same how do you do go about it what, what time do you say boss i i don't think it's working isko band karte hain kuch aur naya karte hain the customer will tell you agar customer se acha feedback aa raha hai customer ask for the product keep it ha agar aap bana rahe ho lekin koi khareed nahi raha hai right okay that's not so good ha but lekin kab tak survive karoge matlab i'm sure something is dekho dekho wo to bhai jab tak paise hain to survive kar sakte ho right paise khatam ho gaye to kya karoge kya karenge bilkul cool hai now this very interesting question has come that in our investors keen on investing in only in startup ideas which are revenue based and based on you know Uh, the basic needs and others uh, are there also startups which are getting into uh, you know the social domain where the straight away revenue is not there so how would they invest to look at it there are many startups like that which have got not got revenue early on but they are raising money and right. they are holding on right there are, you know enough examples but at some point in time they have to get revenue right you can't continue indefinitely right. without revenue agree Okay, so one last question, Mr. Big Chandani, uh, before we just close, uh, is what's next now for you? I think more of the same. Uh, you know, Info Edge is there; it's running some businesses. We are investing right. in some businesses. We will launch a venture fund, and then okay. you know, outside of that, I'm doing some philanthropy. Uh, Ashoka okay. University is one. Right, right. So you plan nothing, to nothing radically, lot? nothing, nothing, nothing radically new. Okay, so next decade, more or the more or less the same, but incrementally increase and find out uh, some more to do that. Correct. Correct. And 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 spend more time doing uh, more interesting things than running day to day business of InfoEdge, right? That's what Correct. we plan to do. Correct. Perfect, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it was a pleasure hosting Mr. Sanjeev Bichandani. Mr. Bichandani, it was an honor and a pleasure to to have a conversation with you. We really thank you on the behalf of Flame University, my colleagues. uh the committee of the purpose summit and the uh, founders and the vice chancellor of frame university thank you uh, for listening to our uh, conversation and we look forward to have a much more interesting conversations also coming up over a period of time uh, next two days we will have uh, equally good conversations happening so stay tuned uh, follow us on twitter you know my social media is steaming saying say twitter say social media <laughs> keep following us on on linkedin uh, you know my colleague uh, sajit is the uh, digital champion so he is saying uh, say all the right things so i'm not a very digitally savvy guy thank you so thank, thank, you, you. thank you thank you for thank having you so us much for